Hello again, and welcome to Practice Group International, where I teach you exactly what ETS requires of you to earn a respectable passing score on your TOEFL IBT. Hello, my name is Mr. Hearn, and I am your TOEFL tutor. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how ETS requires you to answer highlighted sentence questions. Now, I say that slowly because every other video I've seen on YouTube talks about them being sentence simplification questions. They're not sentence simplification questions, they're highlighted sentence questions. Oh, it's so frustrating for me to see so many other people teaching the wrong things. If you've been struggling with passing your TOEFL IBT, it isn't because you don't know English, it's because someone else is teaching you things that just don't work. So. I'm gonna teach you how to simplify this question so that you can answer it quickly, easily, and accurately in the way ETS requires you to do so. Now, I am gonna show you a couple of things about some of the other ways that are being taught first so that you'll really understand. And I'm gonna show you the comparison between how their methods don't work. And I'm gonna show you how the methods that I teach you, that is the ways that ETS requires you to answer the question on the test is going to help you to answer it faster. All right, let's get into it. Let's take a look at what some of the other methods are for answering this highlighted sentence question. The most common method for answering this question is to, number one, read the question. Number two, read the highlighted sentence carefully. Number three, think of how you would paraphrase the highlighted sentence. And finally, number four, eliminate choices that don't match your paraphrase. Have you used this method yourself? Have you found that it's really challenging? I mean, just trying to understand that highlighted sentence, it's very confusing. And sometimes we even give up on trying to understand the whole sentence and just look for a choice that matches because we're running out of time. If this sounds familiar to you, then I certainly understand, but there is a better way of doing it. Let's take a look at the common method for what other tutors are teaching. Take a look. This is a very common method being taught right now, and these tutors are calling this a sentence simplification question, which I don't understand why, but this is the method. Number one, read the question. Number two, read the relevant sentence carefully. Number three, read the answer options. And number four, eliminate incorrect answer options. Well, okay, that sounds a lot like the common method with the exception that instead of just trying to pick the answer that you think is similar to what you thought the sentence was about, it's about looking at your choices and eliminating wrong answers. Okay, it's still very vague to me. I don't know how you feel about it, but a lot of this stuff that I'm being taught by other people doesn't make sense. Now, there is a much easier way to answer this question. I'm not saying easy, but it's much easier when you do things the way ETS has designed the test. And that's what I really teach you. I'm teaching you how the test is structured and the rules that ETS has for you to use to eliminate wrong choices. Now, let's take a look at the basic method for what I teach, and then I'm going to step-by-step -step details of how to answer this question quickly, easily, and accurately. Take a look. First of all, I call these highlighted sentence questions. And the procedures I teach are essentially, number one, never read the question. Number two, break the highlighted sentence into parts. Number three, understand the general idea of each part. And number four, eliminate wrong choices based on the rules. Well, let's break that down a second because if you'll notice, it's definitely different than the common method or the method that other tutors are teaching. First of all, I don't call it a sentence simplification question. Why do I not call it a sentence simplification question? Because all of the questions on the reading section are sentence simplification questions. You have to simplify the question, you have to simplify the sentence in the passage, and you have to simplify your choices so you can eliminate wrong choices. And we'll get into that in other videos. 
But why do I call these highlighted sentence questions? Well, I like to do things so that there's no way my students can make a mistake. When you look at this question, what's the first thing you know about it? Well, the sentence says it's a highlighted sentence. And in the passage, there's a highlighted sentence. So when you get to this question and you see a highlighted sentence in the passage, you know it's a highlighted sentence question. You don't have to read the question. Why? Let's take a look at this question. And I want to show you exactly why we never, ever, ever read the question. Take a look. Now, number 11, this is obviously a highlighted sentence question because it has a highlighted sentence in the paragraph and it says highlighted sentence in the question. All right, so highlighted sentence questions are obvious, but why wouldn't I read the question? You know that this is a timed test, right? Did you know that the highlighted sentence question is always worded the same way, exactly the same way? So if you know what the question is, if you know what the question is going to ask you, and you know how to identify it, why do you need to read it? I mean, most of my students take 12 to 15 seconds to read this question, and that's 12 to 15 seconds that you could use to actually answer the question. So the first thing we do is never, ever, ever read the question. However, there is one aspect about this question I would like you to know. And once I tell most of my students this, they've never seen that before. Everyone concentrates on the paraphrase part, but this question has rules, you see. And if you don't follow the rules, you won't be able to answer the question correctly. Let me show you the rules. Take a look. Everyone focuses on this part of the highlighted sentence question. However, that is not what you're supposed to do. This is the part that matters. Incorrect choices, change the meaning in important ways, or leave out essential information. Did you see that? You know, many tutors are teaching you to eliminate wrong choices, but what are the criteria? ETS tells you exactly what their rules are, if you know what you're looking for. That's what I do. I always point out exactly what ETS wants of you so that you can answer questions quickly, easily, and accurately. Let's take a look again at the methods to see what do I do next? I mean, after I just skip the question altogether, saves time, reduces confusion. It's unnecessary. Let's just get right into looking at the highlighted sentence, but what do I do with it? Number two, we break the highlighted sentence into parts. Hey, you know what? I just had an idea. Why don't I give you a preview into my TOEFL video course so that you know exactly what to expect when you get in there? Let's take a look at that. Question type number two, highlighted sentence, also known as paraphrase questions. There will be zero to three per passage. Now you may be freaking out saying three of these in a passage, mister. Hey, listen. I make new videos regularly. You may not see a whole lot of views on my videos because anytime I learn something new, share it with you because I want you to pass this test. It's important. You've got to. If you've been struggling with this test, I'm telling you right now, you can pass it as soon as you know how to do so. So when I say there could be three, it's because one of my students recently called me to say, Mr. There were three of these highlighted sentence questions in one passage. And she got freaked out. And I said, wait a minute, didn't you say you're really good at these? She said, yeah, I am. I said, so really this is a gift. She goes, I saw a second one and a third one and I just lost my mind and I, I didn't know what to do. And I said, follow the procedures, answer the questions. So you know what she did? She took the test again and she passed. ETS puts a lot of anxiety and confusion into the test. That's how they beat you. The TOEFL isn't hard. It's just tricky. Let's see how this question works so that they don't trick you anymore. So here's how it goes. Take a look. Highlighted sentence questions cause anxiety because they are intimidating and confusing. Highlighted sentence questions also cause anxiety because they can take a long time to answer. Well, 
they can take a long time to answer when you don't know how to do it properly. When you know how to answer the question according to what ETS wants you to do, it's faster and it's easier to get the correct answer and know that you've got the right answer. So let me show you step-by-step step how to do things the ETS way. Don't worry. When something is complex, break it into smaller parts and work it one part at a time. Highlighted sentences typically have three to five parts. Step one, don't read the question. Go directly to the highlighted sentence. Remember that skipping the question gives you more time to answer the question. It's unnecessary to read the question, so let's move on. The only part of the question that you need to know is the rules it gives you for eliminating incorrect choices. The rule is that incorrect choices change the meaning in important ways or leave out essential information. Step two, do not read and understand the entire sentence as a whole. Instead, break the sentence into parts. Now here's where I differ again from what other tutors are teaching. They're telling you to read the sentence carefully so that you understand what it means. The sentence is designed to be confusing. You see, there's typically three to five parts in this sentence, and each part has a different main idea. So when you try to understand the sentence as a whole, it's just way too confusing. It's like trying to juggle five bowling balls at one time. It's just too hard and it's unnecessary. You see, the rules are to eliminate choices that are missing a major part or changing the meaning of a major part. So all we really need to know is the little individual parts in the sentence, what do they mean individually, and then look at your choices and eliminate choices that are different from what's stated in the passage or not mentioned at all. Oh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's continue on with Step number three, when breaking your sentence into parts, commas, transition words, prepositions, and conjunctions are natural breaks. Commas separating things in a list are not natural breaks. But what do I mean by this? Well, when you're looking at your really long highlighted sentence, very intimidating and confusing highlighted sentence, to be able to break it into pieces, understand that English grammar has very specific functions and punctuations. So when you break the sentences into parts based on commas or transition words or direction words like but, furthermore, although, it's easy to see where they're broken. Instead of reasoning and understanding, instead of, instead of reading and reasoning and understanding, we just look at the different punctuation or words and we say, okay, I can break it here and here and here. And then you know, now I just have to look at these different parts. Okay, let's see what to do next. Step three, read each separate part for its general meaning. Again, do not try to understand the sentence as a whole. Keep in mind, this is not a reading comprehension test. It's a test of how well you know ETS's rules and how well you obey their rules. We don't have to really understand the sentence at all. We just have to know What's the general meaning of each part? So now let's see what to do once you understand the general meaning of each part. Step four, eliminate any choice that either changes the meaning of a part of the highlighted sentence or leaves out an essential part. Credited choices either obey the rules or make no sense. So what do I mean by that? Well, you see, ETS knows that you are reading to understand, and you're trying to pick the answer that means something the same or very similar to the highlighted sentence. And so they will make choices that sometimes make no sense, or they're kind of sort of like what's the highlighted sentence's meaning, but not exactly, but they don't break the rules. See, this is not a test of reading comprehension. This is a test of knowing ETS's rules and obeying their rules. They know that you're looking for the right answer and that you don't want to make a mistake and pick the wrong choice. And so they have credited answers that don't make any sense. And so people will pick the wrong answer 
before they'll pick something that doesn't make any sense. Oh, yeah, they're tricky. I'm telling you, the TOEFL IBT isn't hard. It's just tricky. But once you know the tricks, they can't trick you anymore. So let's see, how does this work? Let's take a look. For examples, I'm going to show you an easy, medium, and hard level highlighted sentence question. All of my examples come directly from the official TOEFL IBT test volume two, third edition by ETS from the people who make the test. Remember, when practicing your TOEFL IBT, use only genuine ETS TOEFL IBT practice tests. Well, here we are at test number five, question number 15. It is obviously a highlighted sentence question because there is a highlighted sentence in the passage and the question has the words highlighted sentence. So step one, you've identified the question type as a highlighted sentence question. Now we're going to go to step two where we break the sentence into pieces. The first thing I look for is commas because they stick out. Where are they? Here, 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 and here. All right, now that I've got it broken into parts where the commas are, I want to see what's the main idea of each part. Keep in mind that we're not reading for complete understanding of the full sentence. We're looking for the general idea of each part. So what do we have here? Stability of the biological clock's period is one of its major features, even when the organism's environment is subjected to considerable changes in factors, such as temperature. It's just giving a description of one of the factors, so it's not essential information that would be expected to affect biological activity strongly. Now, again, consider just what is the idea for each part. In the beginning, stability of the clock's period is a major feature. Notice that I simplified that part of the sentence. You see, when it comes to sentence simplification, what we want to do is read less, understand more to get a higher score. We want to be able to understand the main idea of the sentence without being bogged down by all the extra vocabulary. I do have a sentence simplification video that helps you to understand exactly how to read less and understand more. And I'll put the link to that video at the bottom and at the end of this video. Let's get back to answering this question. So again, stability of the clock's period is one of its major features, even when the organism's environment is subjected to considerable changes expected to affect biological activity strongly. All right, now let's take a look at our choices. And remember, we're going to eliminate those choices that change the meaning in important ways or leave out essential information. Now let's take a look at the choices. And just as we did with the highlighted sentence, let's break our choices into pieces. Choice A says that stability, a feature of the biological clock's period, depends on changeable factors such as temperature. But is that what our highlighted sentence says? Well, the first part seems pretty close. Stability is a feature of the biological clock's period. In our original sentence, it says it's a major feature. But what about this second part? Depends on changeable factors such as temperature. Is that what our sentence says? Our sentence says that stability is a major feature even when the organism's environment is subjected to considerable changes in factors. So the second half of A changes the meaning of our highlighted sentence, and therefore, it is not possible. Now let's look at choice B. And again, let's break it into the major parts. A major feature of the biological clock is that its period does not change. That's one main idea. Despite significant changes in the environment. What is our original sentence talking about? It's talking about stability being one of the biological clock's major features. Saying something does not change is another way of saying that it's stable. 
And so saying that a major feature of the period does not change is very similar to the first half of our highlighted sentence. But what about the second half? Despite. Despite is another way of saying even when. Significant changes in the environment. Our original sentence says even when the organism's environment is subject to considerable changes in factors. Now, is this a complete copy of our highlighted sentence? No, but I'm going to say it's close enough in the part that's not missing a major piece and it's not changing anything. So I'm going to say B is possible. Now, if you weren't sure, keep in mind that we have three ways of answering possible, not possible, or I'm not sure. Because sometimes the credited choices make no sense. Now let's look at choice C. And again, breaking the choice into pieces, a factor such as temperature is an important feature in the establishment of the biological clocks period. Is this saying something similar or different, or is it missing something major? Looking at the first half, we have a factor such as temperature is an important feature. Does our sentence say that about the factors? Our sentence says that even when the organism's environment is subjected to considerable changes in factors, it's not saying that the factor is an important feature. So that automatically changes something. And what about the second half in the establishment of the biological clocks period? Wait a minute. Where is the mention of stability being a major feature? See, it's not a factor that's an important feature. It's stability. Therefore, choice C is not possible. And what about D? Biological activity is not strongly affected by changes in temperature. What about stability being a major feature of the biological clocks period? You see, choice D could be reasonable. If we're trying to get the main idea of the sentence without really understanding the pieces of it, choice D could seem right. However, it's missing a major part and it's changing the meaning of the highlighted sentence. Therefore, D is not possible, leaving us with choice B. All right, so did you see what I did there? I went step by step. Now, I know that it may seem like this is going to take too long, but I can assure you that it's way faster than trying to read the question and then read the sentence and really understand it and then try to come up with your own idea and then look at your choices and try to eliminate choices that are different from what it is or pick the one that you think is right. When we do that, have you had trouble thinking that more than one choice makes sense? If you're reasoning it out, more than one choice could make sense, or maybe they all seem wrong. But when you follow ETS's rules, it's very clear as to which choices are wrong. And just pick what's left. Remember, the one that's left doesn't have to be right. It just has to not be wrong according to their rules. So what did I do here? Basically, I went, I skipped reading the question. It's not a question anyway. It's a direction. So let it direct you to the highlighted sentence. So we go to the highlighted sentence and we don't try to read it to understand the whole thing. That's too hard and confusing. What we do is we break it into pieces and then we say, okay, what does each piece mean? And then just in a general sense, then you go to your choices and say, okay, break my choice into pieces and say, do these pieces match? Am I missing a piece or is one of my pieces changing the meaning of my highlighted sentence? You have three ways of answering, right? There's possible, which means it's kind of sort of like what the highlighted sentence is or not possible. It's definitely missing a major piece or changing the meaning of one of the major pieces or I don't know because sometimes ETS makes choices that make no sense or they're kind of sort of right, but I'm not sure. If you're not sure, just leave it. Eliminate those choices that are definitely wrong according to the rules. And pick the one that's left. Lefties do better than righties on a TOEFL IBT. 
Righties read, reason, pick what they think is right, and they often get tricked into picking what's wrong. Lefties use ETS's structures and rules to just obey the rules, understand what is the question asking me about, and what are the rules for wrong choices. Eliminate those choices that are wrong using the rules and pick what's left, and you get it right. All right, let's take a look at another one of these questions so that you really get an idea, a feel for how to just answer it using the rules without trying to reason it out. Let's take a look. Here we are at test number two, question number 13. And we have, again, highlighted sentence question. How do we know? There's a highlighted sentence in the paragraph, and it says highlighted sentence in the question. Number one, we skip reading the question, and we go directly to our highlighted sentence. Step number two, we break that highlighted sentence into pieces, where commas are obvious breaks, but also we can break our sentence into pieces in other ways, like this. Over long periods of time, substance whose physical and chemical properties change with the ambient climate at the time. What else does it say? Can be deposited in a systematic way to provide a continuous record in those properties over time, sometimes for hundreds or thousands of years. This part at the end, sometimes for hundreds or thousands of years, they're really talking about changes in those properties over time or over long periods of time. And therefore, this part, sometimes for hundreds of thousands of years, it's not essential information. In other words, when a part of the sentence is repeating something or giving a description of something previously mentioned, it's really non-essential information. Okay, so now let's take a look at our choices. Choice A, remember, break your choice into pieces. What's the main idea of choice A? Because physical and chemical properties of substances are changing, is that what our highlighted sentence says or is it different? Or is there something missing? It says here that because physical and chemical properties of substances are changing, but our sentence says that over long periods of time, substances whose physical and chemical properties change with the climate can be deposited in a systematic way. Wait a minute. This can't be right because that first part changes the meaning. This is saying that they're unchanging. And right here it says that they change with the ambient climate. Choice A is not possible. What about choice B? For hundreds or thousands of years, people have been observing changes in the chemical and physical properties of substances. Now, for hundreds or thousands of years, well, maybe that could be something that's in the passage, but what about this part? People have been observing changes in the chemical and physical properties of substances. Does our original sentence say that people have been observing changes in the chemical and physical properties for hundreds of thousands of years? No. Our highlighted sentence is saying that the substances whose chemical and physical properties change with the ambient climate can be deposited in a systematic way, sometimes for hundreds or thousands of years. So this is changing. The people have not been observing these changes, the changes have been happening for hundreds of thousands of years. What about choice C? Break it into pieces. Because it takes long periods of time for the climate to change, is there something about that in our sentence? Over long periods of time, substances, change with the ambient climate, can be deposited in a systematic way, to provide a continuous record of changes. And this says that because it takes long periods of time for the climate to change, I'm not sure about that part, but let's look at the second part. Systematic changes in the properties of substances are difficult to observe. Does our highlighted sentence say that systematic changes in the properties of substances are difficult to observe 
because it takes a long time? No, it's saying that these changes take a long time. And there's nothing about people observing them at all. Therefore, C is not possible. What about D? What does it say? Changes in systematically deposited substances that are affected by climate can indicate climate variations over time. What does our original sentence say? It says that substances whose physical and chemical properties change with the climate can be deposited in a systematic way to provide a continuous record of those properties over time. Does it say that the substances are systematically deposited? Deposited in a systematic way. It does. And does it say that they're affected by climate? The properties change with the ambient climate at the time. It does. Can indicate climate variations over time? Provide a continuous record of changes in those properties over time. It does say that in each part. Therefore, D is the best answer, not because it's so similar to our highlighted sentence, but because it doesn't have any major parts missing and it doesn't change the meaning of any of the major parts. All right. Do you get right now that it's not about understanding the question. It's not about understanding the full highlighted sentence. It's about breaking the highlighted sentence into pieces, understanding each part of the sentence in general, and then using your general understanding of each part of the highlighted sentence to eliminate choices that are either missing a major part or changing the meaning of a major part. Let's take a look at one more to really help you understand how this works. Again, by the numbers, first step, identify the question type. It's a highlighted sentence, and how do we know what? It is a highlighted sentence question, and how do we know that? It has a highlighted sentence in the paragraph, and the question has the words highlighted sentence. Now, we just go directly to our highlighted sentence, and break it into pieces. First place I like to look is for commas. Here, here, and here. Now, where else should we break the sentence? Where I like to break it is where there's conjunction words, transition words, but rather than look for those words, I wanna look for major ideas and just stop. For example, the sentence begins, he then set up experiments with caged starlings and found that their orientation was in the proper migratory direction. You see, and is a conjunction. So I can separate these two ideas. He set up experiments with caged starlings. If you don't know what starlings are, doesn't matter. He set up experiments with these something or other. He found that their orientation was, I don't care about it, in fact, was in the proper migratory direction. Now look at this. Pay close attention to opposite direction words. Except when the sky was overcast, at which times there was no clear direction to their restless movements. So what is our sense about? He set up experiments with caged starlings. He found that their orientation was in the proper migratory direction, except when the sky was overcast at which time there was no clear direction to the restless movements. So now I don't know the, what the sentence means as a whole, but I know what the pieces mean. So I'm gonna look at choice A and see, is it missing a piece or is it changing the meaning of one of the pieces? Choice A states, experiments revealed that caged starlings displayed a lack of directional sense and restless movements. Is there anything missing from this? What about where the sky was overcast. There's no mention of the sky being overcast, and therefore, A is not possible. It's missing a major piece. What about B? Experiments revealed that caged starlings were unable to orient themselves in the direction of their normal migratory route. So 
Now, wait a minute. Is that what our original sentence said? He said that their orientation was in the proper migratory direction, except when the sky was overcast. This is missing two parts. It's missing the part about the birds being able to fly, or I say the starlings being able to fly. It's missing the part where it said that the starlings were able to orientate themselves properly in the migratory direction. And it's missing the part about the sky being overcast. So B is definitely not possible. And what about C? Experiments revealed that the restless movement of caged starlings had no clear direction. Well, it's very much like choice B, isn't it? It's missing the part about the starlings having their orientation in the proper migratory direction, and it's missing the sky being overcast. C is out. And what about D? Experiments reveal that the caged starlings orientation was accurate unless, there's our negative direction word, the weather was overcast. Our highlighted sentence has three main ideas. The experiments of the caged starlings found that the orientation was in the proper direction, except the sky was overcast, at which time there was no clear direction of the movements. Therefore, D, although not perfect, is not missing any major part, is not changing the meaning of any major part. D is the best answer. Is it getting a little easier to understand now how we do this? You see, reading and reasoning doesn't work on the TOEFL IBT. You have to use the structure and rules that ETS requires you to use to answer questions. The test of English as a foreign language is not a test of English. It's a test of college readiness. And the skills that I teach in my course are the same skills you're going to need to use when you go to university to get high grades. All right. Well, I hope that you're seeing that this can get easier and easier the more you practice it. Now, there is one last thing that you may find that you're able to eliminate two choices easily, and then you're stuck between two. There is a way to determine which choice is wrong and which choice you should pick. I explain that in great detail in my TOEFL video course. So if you're interested in learning how to get a score over 95 or over 100, be sure to go to the link in the description below and subscribe to my TOEFL video course and be able to pass your TOEFL with a respectable passing score. Now, if you learned something new in this video, please subscribe. What is it? Ah, subscribe, like, share, ring the bell. You know what to do. I'll see you in the next video.